Hobby Quick Hits. Delivering that breaking hobby news. Directly to your earlobes. You want to know those hot drops from the card shop? We've got you covered. With your host, John Newman. Welcome back to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. So, you may remember, or you may not, I'll fill you in either way. A couple weeks ago on our Q&A segment, I had someone ask me, you know, what is something that bothers me about the hobby? And that, you know, I, I try to enjoy it and not complain too much. There, there are some things, but one thing that sort of, you know, gets a little bit like nails on the chalkboard is, you know, I'm a welcoming person. I love when new people come into the hobby. I think it's very important for the viability and long-term success of this great hobby we're part of. But I always get, you know, when when people come into the hobby and don't care to learn or know about the past of the hobby, because we're, we got to where we are now because of that past and when someone's really kind of shuts themselves off to that as a new person or even if they're not new and they don't really care about their past it's sort of you know a pet peeve of mine and they're not they're not a bad person i'm not painting them as a bad person it just kind of bothers me and maybe it's because you know it's funny i've since high school i've really gotten into history history the hobby History in in general, just world history, uh, country's history, and that sort of thing. Maybe a little bit even more now being uh, in the teaching uh, side of things, teaching profession. But So I'm a big into the history. How did we get to this point? And as a lot of people believe, history repeats itself, not only in you know world history, but even in hobby history. When so, so someone doesn't know some stuff or doesn't not even doesn't know we don't automatically know stuff right we gotta research and 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 you know some elbow grease to find stuff out but when someone sort of says hey i don't care i'm here now i don't care about what happened before that always bothers me a little bit and so i answered that question a few weeks back as one of my pet peeves so when thinking about that i'm like you know sure you can google and almost anything and and probably get you know, 80% accurate uh, stuff. But I kind of wanted to put my money where my mouth was, right? So every so often we're going to do something like we're doing today, where I'm going to kind of go back in history with someone important to the past of the hobby and talk about them. And for those that may not know, it will be sort of a history lesson of our hobby. For those that, that do know, may learn something they didn't know, or just refresh, you know, their mind about uh, a person uh, from the hobby, from the industry. And so this is the first time we're doing this kind of episode. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm not doing them in any kind of specific order. But the guy I'm going to tackle today is a gentleman who's uh, uh, no longer with us. But he goes by the name of J. Warren Bowman. And, yep, that last name might sound familiar. Uh, being a hobbyist. He, he is who you think he is. He's the founder of Bowman Card Company, the original Bowman, and uh, we're going to tackle a little bit of his life uh, today, a little bit of a hobby history lesson, if you'll indulge me. But before we get into that, we're going to hear from our great sponsor, Mojo Breaks. We're going to do our Q&A, our new releases, some hobby news, and then we'll learn about J. Warren Bowman. MojoBreakShop.com is the best place to get your sealed wax products and breaks. They not only have the best selection, but the best prices. Whether it's a box or a whole case, they are your guys. They ship worldwide to your doorstep. Their reputation as one of the most trusted in the hobby goes unmatched. They are the 2021 Topps Rip Party Champion Breakers. From sports card to Pokemon cards, their selection can't be beat. They offer daily deals and pre-orders. Hey guys, John Newman here. 
Mojo's prices are already great, but to save an additional 10% off anything in their store, use the code QUICKHITS. That's Q-U-I-C-K-H-I-T-S. Check out the full service store that's open seven days a week in Santa Clara, California, or the website at mojobreak.com. Hey guys, it's Max again from the Sports Card Shop in New Buffalo, Michigan. Today I'm back here again to give us the weekly releases for our Sports Card Nation podcast. Now, to start us off on the 17th, we have 2022 Leaf Stitches and Stabs Baseball. On the 18th, we have 2022 Historic Autographs of Washington Chronicles Blaster. 2022 Historic Autographs of Washington Chronicles Factory Set. 2022 Historic Autographs of Washington Chronicles Hobby. Rittenhouse Doctor Who Series 11 and 12 Trading Cards. Rittenhouse Doctor Who Series 11 and 12 Trading Cards UK Edition. And on 2022 Super Break First Time Card Football. 2022 Top Stadium Club Chrome Bundesliga Soccer. 2022 Top Sterling Baseball. And on the 20th, we have 2021-22 Panini Prism Collegiate Draft Picks Basketball H2. And on the 20th, the last release of the week, 2021 Top Stroop Sea Cream Baseball. Have a good rest of your week and enjoy the podcast. Answer my question! The question! I'll answer the question. You want answers? All right, this week's question asked me, John, with eBay partnering with PSA to do the grading card, uh, uh, you know, authorization on sales two thousand dollars or more. Do you think that's an overreach on eBay's part, based on all the returns they were getting? Uh, no, I, I don't. I think this is just them trying. You know, there's a, a, a saying in in business and retail, right? Give extra value. Uh, to your product, I think this is eBay trying to get give extra value uh, to the product, and uh, uh, this is how they're doing it. Um, while not everyone may like it or agree with it, I think that's that's the direction they're they're going uh, with it. That's uh, what they're trying to do. And right now, it's at the two thousand dollar level, but eventually, they're looking to make it to the even any car, any graded card over two hundred fifty uh, dollars. I uh, like I said in a previous episode. I think it's odd that it'll be PSA looking at other grading card uh, companies' work and you know signing off on it, if you will. But that's what is going to happen here. So uh, you know that's that's where I, I I don't think it's necessarily an overreaction on returns, and and I think. Returns are still going to probably uh, happen uh, potentially, maybe maybe not as much, uh, but they're still going to occur. I don't think there's any way to fully get away from that. It's time for the Hobby What's Up, where we go around the hobby world and tell you all the latest news and breaking stories from the hobby we love. What's up? What's up? What's up? Not a huge news week, but uh, the heavy news is on the graded side of the hobby, starting with PSA's hyped-up announcement. Uh, You know, a a few days before, they announced they would have some big news, quote, big news uh, pertaining to the economy level. A lot of uh, speculation before the announcement actually came that they were going to go back to the 20 to 25 dollar level which many people uh were hoping uh that did not happen uh and the you know all the hype was really you know it was overhyped and under delivered if you ask me they announced uh their economy level would go unlimited stay at 50 bucks and be open to members of the collectors club only that's 99 dollars a year sounds to me almost like you know, a way just to try to incle- increase their uh, collector's club membership. Uh, you know, probably not a bad play. But the way they 
sort of led into that announcement, um, it was, I, I think was poorly done. I think they sort of postured that the news was going to be bigger than it actually turned out to be. And so this didn't move uh, my meter much. It really didn't change much other than that there's no cap, no limit uh, on the $50 level economy submissions. They said they will uh, estimate a time of return is 90 days. They are further along in their backlog, they've reported. The question I get asked a lot is, you know, John, will they ever get back to that, you know, $20, $25 level or even lower like it used to be? Uh, I think the lowest you'll ever see it is $20, $25. And quite frankly, I don't know, you know, I've heard Nat Turner say that he wants to be that again, but I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, you can say whatever you want, but uh, the proof's in the pudding, right? When you do it, and uh, set registry uh, folks that uh, do, you know, send a whole set basically in uh, to be graded. Uh, there's a big difference between twenty-five and fifty dollars uh, for those guys. So maybe you know we've talked about it on Hobby Hotline this past week. You know, maybe they could do something uh, special for a set registry. Maybe, you know, start a set registry club uh, membership type of deal. You know, I'd like to see some solutions to some of the the problems and or slash complaints. And uh, I don't think we've seen that really uh, yet. And, uh, you know, the long, quite frankly, the longer PSA stays at the $50 or higher level, it's really opened that door for SGC and CSG. They, their submissions uh, continue uh, to go up, and, uh, and and business is doing very well uh, for them. So uh, those those two great companies will tell you uh, they hope PSA stays at the fifty dollar level or, or higher because uh, they're they're reaping the most reward uh, from that. Well, we just mentioned CSG. CSG also. Uh, release the what their uh, perfect 10 label would look like perfect 10 meaning a card that grades 10 in all four grading categories uh, much like uh, you know uh, Beckett's black label SGC's pristine uh, as we all know PSA doesn't do a perfect 10, 10 it's just gem mint 10 uh, but uh, CSG's release their label heavy uh, you know, heavy black as as the as the main color, and uh, much like uh, Beckett's, uh, I saw it. It's 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 sharp looking, and obviously, if you s- submit there, uh, I don't at this point. But if you do, you're you're hoping you get one of those labels. And you know, one of the reasons these companies do these, you know, perfect ten, pristine, uh, is you know because PSA doesn't right. It's a, a level you can shoot for that PSA. Uh, doesn't uh, offer and uh, CSG now uh, part of that uh, uh, group that offers a you know perfect score uh, grade with a uh, uh, specialized label for it. And you live long enough, sometimes you realize like good things happen to not good people and that this story fits into that category backyard breakers the uh, i don't want to say dynamic duo i almost would like to say something else but we'll keep it uh pg that outfit uh pulled uh, out of a break uh the lebron logo man one of one that uh, uh there's a bounty and so many people uh, are talking about and trying to get uh including famous people like uh, Drake, it's obviously a one-on-one. Uh, now, whether uh, now we'll have to wait and see whether the per, the outright rightful owner uh, gets uh, their card because uh, this uh, this definitely trumps the the gold Trevor Lawrence that uh, they changed their mind on and didn't want to uh, ship to the person they they should uh, should have. So we'll see how this uh, plays out. But sometimes, right, you know. Things happen that, you know, make you scratch your head. But uh, there you go uh, uh, on that. Fanatics has launched their first 
card auctions of 2022. It's 840 lots, several one-on-ones. Uh, mostly modern cards, very, very little vintage, uh, mostly newer stuff. And, uh, this auction for those interested will run, uh, through the end of this month to the 26th to be exact, May, uh, 26th. So fanatics auctions, uh, another arm of the company in their quest for basically hobby takeover. feature presentation all right today we're going to talk about j warren bowman and the uh do not use the j too much or more known as warren bowman he was born in ohio uh, but really grew up uh, in new mexico and before he started gum incorporated which he did in 1927 he was an entrepreneur journeyman. That's probably the best way I can explain it. He just tried many, many different things until he, f he got into the gum business and then eventually the card business. So these are all things, these are all the hats that he wore at one time or another before his real forte came into play. A uh, New Mexico rancher, a used car salesman, a Los Angeles policeman until he was uh, caught with women uh, in his patrol car, which lost uh, caused him to lose that job. Uh, he uh, carried fruit uh, in a truck, a fruit trucker. He had a coffee roasting business and uh, worked in a paper bag and food manufacturing uh, line of work. He was married, not one. Not two, not three, not four, but five times, often called by people who knew him, uh, a playboy or serial entrepreneur. Uh, risk taker would be two words you would definitely use with Warren Bowman. He was not scared to put himself out there and go for something. So I mentioned him being a Los Angeles police officer and then getting caught with multiple women in his patrol car. Uh, he was fired and went to Mexico, the country, and started a few different businesses that there that did not were not very successful. He wound up coming back to the States, wound up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with $25 left to his name. He was on uh, a train. On that train, he had a conversation with a gum salesman who uh, started him on his journey into the gum business. So in 1927, with very little money in Philadelphia, he started his company called Gum Incorporated. But the company didn't take off till 1929 when they uh, marketed Blowney Gum, B-L-O-N-E-Y, and that really... Uh, took off and built the company. At this point, uh, the war was in effect and uh, it was becoming customary to put trading cards in with the gum. And his first foray into doing that was in 1936 with the G-Men and the Heroes of Law Enforcement set. So in 1936, uh, Bowman's first foray into card production along with the gum. And in 1938, they produced what now is one of the most famous uh, card sets uh, in the history of trading cards. Uh, in 1938, they produced the 240-card Horrors of War set, which was very graphic and controversial at the time, very uh, opinionated and, and right to the point. Uh, again, graphic with the depictions uh, on the cards. They weren't short produced, but remain very popular in, in, to this day uh, because of the significance uh, of that set. During the Great Depression, the company was making $40,000 uh, a week, which was very considerable uh, for those downtimes. The first foray into 
baseball card production was between the years of 1939 and 1941 with their play ball line of cards. Now, if you're in the hobby and into vintage, you're very familiar with the 1939, 40, and 41 uh, play ball set. And then the war hit and made, you know, base between rations and supply issues, uh, baseball cards uh, went dormant and really weren't produced during this time. Then Leaf came out with their 1948 colored baseball card set and Bowman wanted to enter uh, the fray and they produced a smaller dimension size set with heavy New York City uh, baseball players. They also produced a 108 card football and basketball set. Want to backtrack slightly. In 1936, he was actually ousted from his own company after a disagreement with his partner, Franklin Canning. Uh, he was ousted, but in 1937, after a long, bitter legal battle, uh, ended uh, with the Pennsylvania State Supreme Court uh, reinstating him as president of the company Gum Inc. In 1949, they added color to their cards to compete with Leaf. Tops entered the fray under the Shoren family in 1952, but struggled, which even included them having to dump cases of 1952 Tops into the Hudson River. Let's talk about a little bit before that, right? These are also known as the uh, you know, baseball card wars between Leaf, Tops, and Bowman. Leaf was the first loser, bowing out literally in 1950. In 1950, Bowman was not only the card king, but the bubblegum king and had gross sales over $1 million a month. And when you think about that now, it uh, doesn't sound like a lot of much, much money in today's industry but in 1950 that was an uh, astronomical number tops was trying to compete leaf dropped out uh tops's early issues were not well received and bowman won those early battles uh and the, the battles did not just happen uh on those candy counters those battles started to happen in court uh, as well as both companies tried to sign Players to exclusive licenses to appear on their cards only, and the other companies still went ahead and produced likenesses of those players. Uh, they spent many a day in a court of law trying to sort that out. Bowman hired a young lady named Joan Crosby to sign as many players uh, as they could figuring, you know, they'd use a feminine touch. The only problem, it sort of backfired when Miss Crosby was not allowed access to locker rooms, being female. And Tops had an ace in their hole, a, a name you might be familiar with, Cy Berger, who had not officially taken over uh, the job of running the baseball card uh, end, was their agent uh, responsible for signing as many players to Tops exclusively. And this is where the game changed because Cy Berger had a lot of contacts inside the locker room with uh, people in these organizations, including the big ones in New York, which had many of uh, big-name player, uh, you know, Mays, Mantle, uh, you know, Snyder, Robinson, uh, you know, Campanella, uh, the great players of, of New York. And uh, uh, they took advantage uh, of Cy Berger's network, uh, and he, he signed many of those big names where Bowman was on the outside looking in. Uh, Topps' uh, light bulb went on, and they handed the keys to the car, basically, to Cy Berger, and the rest was history. Bowman last produced cards in 19... 55 uh, and eventually tops bought him out let's backtrack again a little bit 
Mr. Bowman was a very smart man. He kind of saw uh, the writing on the wall. He kind of saw some of the advantages Topps uh, had uh, maneuvered in place. And in 1952, he actually sold the Bowman and Gum Inc. to Halen Laboratories, and he was out of the card and gum business. He moved to Florida and started a luxury real estate business, which he was very successful at until his death in 1962 at the age of 67. And so there you have Jacob Warren Bowman, uh, part of baseball card and sports card hobby history. All right. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. A little different today, a little bit of a hobby history lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your feedback. Do you like a show like today where we learn someone, uh, an integral figure from Hobby Past that kind of leads us to where we are today? Or not a big thing, you could care less. You know, let me know either way. We're not going to do these all the time anyway, but, you know, if if it's a good received episode, we may do these you know, every few months kind of tackle uh, another historical figure of the hobby that, uh, you know, we may, many may not know uh, of or learn something. So, uh, again, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know uh, either way, and uh, we'll see you Uh, next Monday for another episode of Hobby Quick Hits, or next Friday for another episode of Sports Card Nation.